Okay, so I wanted to take a few minutes just to show you guys a quick demo of the bound state solutions to the finite square well and how they relate to the interior and exterior solutions and how the boundary condition comes into play. So what I've got here is two curves. This is uh, the top curve here, the, the, uh, this one, the green curve, is a cosine inside the well. The well has a, a width, uh, or a, a parameter, half the width, is one, so I guess it's a well width of two. And uh, we have a K0 of five, so um, that represents the depth of the well. And, uh, and of course, since A is one in whatever units, I guess uh, you could say EV nanometers or whatever you like, <coughs> um, then Z0 from Griffith's algebra is, uh, is also five. So the, the way this thing works is I, I have a dial here, I can adjust K. So by adjusting K, I get the interior wavelengths to go up and down. And then of course, you know that Kappa and K are related by this uh, Pythagorean-like relationship. And so it means that uh, if I make K big, I make Kappa small. So you can see as K gets bigger, the exponential outside the well gets weaker. Okay, so that's that's kind of the idea. Now the question is, what are the solutions going to be? Uh, I've got another graph here I can show you that is the one we cooked up in class to find the k values, or really the z values, that satisfy the boundary conditions. And you'll notice that in this case, uh, I have set, um, well, I guess z0 is adjustable, so I can adjust z0 to whatever you like. I'm going to set it to 5 here, and there's some kind of quirk that, uh, well, anyway, I set z0 to 5, so when z is equal to 5, z over z0 is equal to 1. You can see here's the, here's the 1, and there's z0 is equal to 5, and there are four solutions. Uh, so it looks like the first solution is right about here, which if I'm reading correctly is about 1.3 or so, 1.3. So if I pop back over to this side and I dial the k value to 1.3, you'll notice that that's exactly the point where the kink in the slope between the cosine in the inside and the exponential on the outside, that kink disappears. So 1.3 is the value of k that not only satisfies the continuity, notice I got this thing set up so it always, the continuity is always there, but the, uh, but the derivative has a kink in it except at certain special values of k, and those values of k are the ones that solve the transcendental equation. Let's check the next one. Um, it looks like that's at about 2.6 or so. Now, uh, one other thing I want to point out before we move on, and notice how steep this, how sharp this exponential is. It goes to zero very quickly. It's down in the dirt by 1.6. Um, but let's march ahead and let's find the point where the other solution, the asymmetric solution, and notice it's right about 2.6. The kink goes away at 2.6, but the exponential now is a little bit weaker. It's not coming to zero quite as quickly, but uh, that value of k, 2.6, is right about where the slope and the continuity boundary conditions are both satisfied. Now, where's the next one? It looks like it's going to be about 3. Point, let's see, 5, 6, 7, 8, 3.85 or 3.9, I guess 3.80 something. That's hard, kind of hard to see. Um, let's go ahead and dial this up to 3.80 something. And notice that that's right about where the kink disappears in the cosine solution, in the symmetric solution. So um, each solution to this uh, transcendental equation corresponds to a k value where the continuity equation and the slope condition, the derivative of the, of the wave function, are continuous at the well boundary. Um, and notice that each one corresponds only to a solution for a particular symmetry, even, odd, even. And here we see that the last solution looks like it's going to be right around 4.9 or so, almost 5, not quite, 4.9. Let's dial that in. Uh, and this is going to be an anti-symmetric solution. Let's go ahead and dial it up. 4.9. There it is. And uh, 
Notice we've got a nice um, continuity in both the wave function and the derivative, but notice what's happened to kappa. Kappa is so weak now, the particle is reasonably uh, expected to be out here at 3 and 4. You could me measure it out here at 4, and that means that the energy is so high, the thing's about to escape the well, and uh, the exponential stretches way out into the forbidden zone, into the classically forbidden zone. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you guys. I hope that uh, that helps your intuition about how this stuff works.